Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Pull the Other One with me, Paul Cox. This episode was originally published as a column in the Portsmouth News on the 21st of March 2023. Now let's all go to Rwanda like all the other lucky buggers. <music> Climate anxiety is a very real phenomenon. A growing number of people, especially young people, are consumed by the fear the world is about to end, whereas most people over 40 pray that it does. You don't have to deny climate change to overcome the fear. You look at what's been said versus what's happened. For nearly 60 years, people have been making catastrophic predictions about climate change. Recently, Greta Thunberg deleted a tweet she wrote in 2018, which read, climate change will wipe out all of humanity unless we stop using fossil fuels over the next five years. I don't wish to pick on Greta. These predictions have been made for 60 years and none of them have come to fruition. It's true to say the climate is changing. However, the extent to which it affects our society is still very much up for debate. For me, the solution is not to make the poor give up the little they have. In 1968, Dr. Paul Elick wrote a book called The Population Bomb. Nothing at all alarmist about that title, in which he predicted climate change over population would cause millions to starve to death in the 1970s. Leonard Nimroy of Spock fame in 1978 said, if humanity didn't change its way, we would be heading into the next ice age. He was backed up by prominent scientists who all agreed there would be a new ice age by 2000. In 1980, the US government predicted acid rain would kill all wildlife in America's lakes. In 1988, the UN predicted that rising seas would obliterate nations by 2000. In 2000, scientists predicted that children in the 2020s would never see snow. In 2002, the same scientists predicted there would be a global famine in 10 years. In 2008, NASA said the Arctic would be ice-free by 2018. In 2009, King Charles said we have 96 months to save the world. And in the same year, Gordon Brown said we have just 50 days. Crikey. Like the partner of a cheating lover, we are expected to accept it will never happen again and next time it will be better. Young people, these are the very best days of your life. Enjoy them. We should be responsible. Recycle, don't litter, or burn tires on an industrial scale. But never listen to people who financially benefit from your misery. Last week, I had the first letter of complaint published about me in the news. The complainant, a lovely chap from Waterlooville, was outraged that I was happy to admit that I occasionally work for GB News. I have never been happier in my life. What a wonderful day of jubilant celebration that was. To discover someone is reading my column is more than I could have ever have wished for. I won't call him out. That wouldn't be fair. However, if you are reading this, I would like to offer you complimentary tickets to any epic comedy club show of your choice. In the next few months, we have Milton Jones, Zoe Lyons, Jen Brister, Marcus Bridstock, and Sean Walsh, all headlining across nine of our venues. You are welcome as my guest. Please go to www.epiccomedy.co.uk. I will never come down from this high. I feel like Gary Lineker. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We've just had Mothering Sunday. Mother's Day, or ka as it's known by the florists and card companies. Cynicism aside, it's great to celebrate our mums. 
or mother figures, lest we forget there are some people who have lost their mums or completely despise them for some childhood trauma they can never forgive. Both my parents are in a home now. Unfortunately, it's mine. We built an annex and moved them in. They are feral. I couldn't enjoy special times with my wife for six months after walking in on my dad finishing a yogurt pot with his tongue. To be fair, my mum's great. I was kissing her goodbye recently and accidentally kissed her on the lips. It's weird. It's embarrassing. I didn't want to draw any attention to it, so I just carried on. The worst thing about it was our moustaches got tangled up. It was like stickle bricks. <laughs> Thanks for watching and listening. Please like, comment and subscribe. You can follow me on all forms of social media at Paul Cox Comedy. Until next time, don't be a dick. Leave that to me. Thank you.